So the next question is, can I use stimulant medications in my ADHD bipolar patient? I was taught in school that keep those stimulants away from the mood disorder patients. It's going to destabilize them. It doesn't really work in depression. They're addictive. They're toxic. Uh, I don't want to lose my license. The pharmacist is going to call me up and give me hell. It's not going to be on the insurance formulary. <clears throat> a lot of my, a lot of my um, time is spent reassuring pharmacists about the science of using stimulants in bipolar patients. So this is the Canadian Network for Mood and Anxiety Treatments in conjunction with the International Society for Bipolar Disorder guidelines in 2018. So this is now five years old, five years old, and it probably took them three years, two to three years to write this. So they came to the conclusion back then that stimulants may be used in comorbid ADHD in stable euthymic youth taking optimal doses of anti-manic anti medication. Adjunctive mist amphetamine salts and methylphenidate have been shown to be effective in addressing attentional symptoms and are well tolerated overall in randomized controlled trials. So when I talked to Dr. Goldberg the other day, he's actually very much on the same page. He said, yes, people with bipolar disorder and ADHD stabilize their mood disorder and then go back and address the ADHD. It should be only that simple. If you talk to some mood disorder experts, they'll say that the cognitive difficulties with a patient with bipolar disorder are residual cognitive deficits from their bipolar disorder and not ADHD. And this is where character uh, categorical statements and dogma become problematic because now do, what do I treat, how do I treat the cognitive deficits that, that you think are associated with bipolar disorder? Do I increase the medications for bipolar disorder? Will these bipolar medications overcome the residual cognitive deficits? Not necessarily true. So if you haven't done an assessment for ADHD to rule it out, then you may be looking at cognitive deficits not as a function of the bipolar disorder, but as a function of ADHD pre-existing that you didn't assess. How can you make clinically in the interview a distinction between cognitive residuals of bipolar disorder versus ADHD? The person with ADHD whose bipolar episode resolves will say, these are the same kind of cognitive difficulties I had a year ago two years ago. They're qualitatively the same. The person with bipolar disorder and ADHD, well, the person with bipolar disorder will say, I didn't have these cognitive symptoms six months ago before I had this episode. So go back in history to find out whether the deficits were pre-existing the episode or whether the deficits have now occurred since the episode. A lot of this has to do with the trajectory of symptoms over the course of time, and if you keep that in mind, you'll increase the accuracy of your diagnosis. Let's move on to treatment. So what about amphetamines in ADHD bipolar disorders? This is the design. It's an open-label 40-subject trial. They included bipolar 1s and bipolar 2s. Mania was stabilized for eight weeks with valproate. And some patients, a very small group of patients, had their cognitive symptoms improve. They then took them and put them in a double-blind placebo control with mixed amphetamine salts, low dose, five milligrams BID for two weeks. They did a crossover. Mixed amphetamine salts had significantly more effect on ADHD symptoms than placebo. 89, 90% had a one to two point improvement in CGI with a mean improvement of 1.9. What does that mean? If you don't know what a, glo a clinical global impression improvement score is, you don't know what those numbers mean. A two point change is a 50% reduction in symptoms. That's clinically significant and clinically identifiable. So this shows you that if your bipolar patient, adolescent, is stabilized on their bipolar medications and they have ADHD, you can add your ADHD medications and further improve their level of function. What about mania? So this is a chart review. 42 patients were hospitalized, discharged on lithium or Depakote. 
reduced global response to lithium and Depakote in the ADHD bipolar patients versus the bipolar patients alone. What does that mean? That means that if you have concurrent psychiatric disorders and you go to treat this disorder, this disorder may impact the difficulty of treatment for this disorder. They may not respond as well to the medication for bipolar disorder if they have existing ADHD. This actually occurs with depression as well. So it is likely in the majority of ADHD bipolar patients, the treatment of bipolar disorder alone may result in, in residual symptoms as difficulty in attention, concentration, and planning, etc. So keep in mind, it's not only the differential of what's there, what's not. It's the comorbid disorders, what's there, what's not. The next question is, to what degree is one disorder going to have on the effectiveness of medication for another disorder? This is methylphenidate. So we just looked at amphetamines. This is methylphenidate in youth, four-week placebo-controlled trial. Again, bipolar disorders were stabilized on lithium or Dalvalproex, and they had residual ADHD symptoms. They were randomized to several different methylphenidate doses. And again, the parent rating of the children, the parent rating of the children had an effect size of 0 0.9. No change in the mania rating scale. So again, we have an accumulating body of literature that's suggesting if you have bipolar disorder and ADHD and your bipolar disorder is stabilized, you go ahead and treat the concomitant ADHD and further improve. This is amphetamines in adults. So we just looked at children and adolescents. Now let's look at adults. It's an open label four week flexible dose trial. They use Lizdex amphetamine and flexible dosing between weeks two and four. No subject discontinued because of the induction of mania and hypomania. However, it's only a four week trial. If you want to make a statement about mood stabilization on stimulants, you need six months to a year. So significant improvement in baseline to endpoint was observed in quality of life measures. I think I'm making the point. I'm showing you the accumulation of literature. This is another study out of, out of Sweden, large study with bipolar patients. Mania was defined as hospitalization or a change in medication, and they followed these patients from zero to three months and then three to six months. What happened? If you had bipolar disorder and ADHD, and we put you on methylphenidate, your, your hazard ratio for relapse and destabilization of your bipolar disorder was 6.7. And it was the same at six months. So now we got six months data. If you had bipolar disorder and ADHD and I put you in a mood stabilizer, and then I treat your ADHD, the hazard ratio for induction of mania or hypomania or a change in your mood stabilization medicines was 0.6. So this accumulation of literature, along with professional societies reviewing this literature and coming to the conclusion that yes, treat the bipolar disorder, stabilize them, then go ahead and treat your ADHD patients and don't take the dogmatic position, I'm not touching my mood disorder patients with stimulant medications who have ADHD.